Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So I hope you're enjoying your weekends. It's definitely been an interesting one for me. It's an absolute bloodbath out there at the moment, and BTC is just going to keep doing this until it moves up to a higher level. And what I mean by that is really just moving up to new all-time highs because everything's run with BTC. Everything's run. We've all moved up. We've all made very good gains, right? As BTC hits that peak out, it starts to cool off, it goes up a little bit, it comes down a little bit, it goes up a little bit. It it just will keep repeating that until eventually it either moves up or moves down in a drastic way. And the market either goes up with it or it goes down with it. But when it's doing those bleed out effects where it's going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, but not really going anywhere, it just bleeds memes out, it bleeds alts out, it bleeds blue chips out. No one's really not affected. Apart from VSG, of course, we're still up like 4,000%. But <clears throat> hey, hey, that's for another video. Now, like I said, it is a bloodbath out there. And honestly, like I said, it's been an interesting weekend for me. I've just had, just left a new validator Telegram group just because I just can't cope with people ignoring all of the real issues of the centralization, the double noding, the network noding, the bad behavior to get around the DCM. And these guys are discussing what color they want to put on the car and stuff like that. And all the warning lights are going off. We're blowing smoke out of the exhaust. And it's absolutely hilarious to say the least. So crypto bubbles, like I was saying, it's a bloodbath on the day. Same on the week. Going to look on the month is a little bit mixed. But overall this year, we're up. And if you grabbed at the bottom, if you was buying in those really bad times when everybody was panicking and everybody was saying, oh, you know, it's too expensive, it's going to go down more. I was grabbing those dips. A lot of people I know were grabbing the dicks. And honestly, it's just one of those ones. You've got to have a good mindset going into crypto. Fear is the mind killer. So a lot of you are probably wondering what is all the tension caused by? And I don't really want to talk on the topic whatsoever, but I'm just going to bring this article up and it is triggering sell-offs. It's a narrative. It's being spun. I'm not paying too much attention to it. In my opinion, crypto is neutral. Crypto is for everybody and it doesn't care if you identify as a toaster. It will accept you. It will allow you to use it. It will allow you to, vet, to develop on it and you can become part of it. It doesn't matter if you're a horse. Okay. If you've got Neuralink, and that is allowing that horse to get involved in crypto, then by God, he can get involved in crypto. So as you can see from the thumbnail, we've got a very interesting topic to discuss. So what I'm going to do here is bring up this document. Now, if you've been following the content here, if you're a subscriber, you know, you hit the like button, you hit the notifications bell, you stay informed, you would know I specifically said this was going to happen. We would get the exact amount in a schedule from that court case, from all of the proceedings as to how much of what they own. And we could literally put a pinpoint on it. So for all intent and purposes, right, inherently, this is secret assets. Although a lot of us knew about these assets because we can command stuff out of the chain. We can ask it questions. We can query it for all of the different swagger systems. So we did know the amount of assets they did have, and it is logged and registered on our blessed Lunk Dash and the wallet system that's tied in with that. Beautiful. We've just added CW20 token support. Check it out, guys. But as you can see on here, if we look at the Terra Classic assets, you've got 15 million UST and then only 70,000 uh, LUNC, which is really peculiar uh, to say the least. I always thought they had more than that. So maybe they do have a hidden wallet. And what I think is it's the Lunar Foundation Guard has some tucked away as well. So I don't know if those are added into these. Now, moving forward, 15 million UST, 70,000 LUNC and then 84,000 in other assets. This is a considerable amount of money. Okay, we're talking dollar value here to be precise, and it's adding up to around $15.3 million. Now, my question would be it's been listed inside their assets of what more or less they've got, what they can afford, and what they're going to be able to pay their bills off, their fines off with, and anything that inherently comes after the court case and all of the different sort of legal actions that could be taken against them from investors, from holders at the time. It leaves us in a position, doesn't it, where we ask, are these assets going to get sold? Now, one thing I would say is there's not market books big enough on CEXs to absorb 15 million, almost 15.2 million dollars worth of UST. It's absolutely 
impossible to do that. It would take a long time. We would know they were doing it. Some people have already noticed that some USDC has gone out of this wallet. And what that is, is them paying off different court fees, whether it be them paying for their lunches. It's absolutely crazy what was covered in those court documents or it's, it's crazy accommodation, all sorts of different stuff, but it, it's going to keep going down. These assets are going to keep going down because this is what they have available to deal with, to pay off the debts, to pay off any fees, any lawyer fees, solicitors, whatever. Now, what I would say to myself is they have a responsibility to not dunk on this chain. They left us in the dirt. They bottlenecked us. They provided us very poor infrastructure. Every time there was an update, LUNC infrastructure just got worse until the point where we had to bring community-owned assets like Lunk Dash back out of the closet, dust them off and upgrade the heck out of them and jack them up like a silverback gorilla on steroids. It's absolutely amazing. Money flow, delegator flow, so many tools over there and it didn't cost you guys a dime and it never gets used against you. As usual, for two years, we have been nonstop building. But what I was thinking is most people will probably want these to burn. I don't think that's a good idea. Just send them to the Oracle Rewards Pool. People were talking about ways to replenish your Oracle Rewards Pool. If we're able to decide as a community what happens with these assets, the obviously the LUNC native ones, that would be great. But what we shouldn't do is not speak about this, not raise awareness about it. And what we should probably do is get a proposal up in depth, written in depth in relation to these assets to raise awareness and let them know we know that they've got these assets and we don't want them to sell them. So you've got two opportunities and two sort of routes that I would realistically say you should take with this. Send them to the Oracle Rewards pool, which would cause a lot of controversy. Some people want to send them to the community pool and a lot of people want to burn them. So you could just burn them. Everyone would probably agree to that. So that leaves us with two possible scenarios. The third one ah, is not a scenario I ever want to see happen, which is these coins getting used to swap into stable assets and then eventually swapped into fiat, thus dunking on our ecosystem. And like I said, they've already caused us enough issues. They've already caused us enough bottlenecks and as much as people kind of like them um i will always hold them accountable even with the positive stuff they they've kept us down for a long time a long 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 time to the point of where people weren't even able to use station v3 it just doesn't work for lunc it doesn't work for validators it doesn't do any of that so all of this is really interesting. I'm sorry about the negative stuff with BTC moving downwards, guys, but I think you should all remember, right? For every panic seller, there is someone waiting there to buy that dip. Crypto cannot be stopped and neither can this halving event. It's mathematics, it's precision, it's concept, it's design. It's the way it is inherently supposed to go. So all of these people who say it's priced into the market, I don't think it is. What will be priced into the market and what I think is definitely going to happen is a halving dump. I think we'll see a decent pump before the halving, couple days on the halving. I think a lot of people will panic sell because it's not continuing to go up and they'll think that the halving is all it has to offer. But everybody knows who's worth their biscuits in crypto that it takes around the course of a year to peak out. So it's going to be a really interesting time. And honestly, every time these dips happen, I'm continuing to buy. I'm continuing to load up and I'm continuing to not be one of those people that say and think to themselves, once it all starts moving again, I wish I loaded up on more. I've got an XRP video uh, coming out. It's a really interesting situation over there. There's been some unlocks happened early. We'll have to discuss them and what it means. So do keep an eye out for that video. And like I said, if you're new here, subscribe, drop a comment, drop a like, hit the notifications bell on the way out. And other than that, guys, stay safe, stay humble, stay aware. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.